that you've heard up to this point? Because now we're actually starting. Yeah. So, here we go. This is when the YouTube video will begin. Exactly. So you got to see the uh, the bonus extra features. <laughs> it's only on a DVD. Exactly. So um, welcome everybody to the C4AA webinar series. Um, Steve, what number is this? This is number 26. Number 26. We started this series um, actually the day after uh, Donald Trump got elected. And we started it because while we work with activists and artists all the time during our trainings, it's just you know 15 at a time, 10 at a time, all good. But the people we were meeting had such great ideas, had such amazing things to share. And we've seen, we felt like this was, well, a, a, a time of emergency and that we wanted to give a platform for some of the great creative activists that we know to share some of their ideas with all you out there. Um, and also talk a little bit about the, some of the work that we do and what we've learned in doing this work for 10 years. So this is number 26. Um, and we have a really special show. What are we doing today, Steve? We're talking to Kenny, Kenneth Bailey. Sorry, Kenneth Bailey from the Design Studio of <laughs> Social Intervention. I just totally destroyed his Kenneth. Yeah. Um, and I, it's great that you mentioned the uh, Trump election thing, because it goes along with our theme that Kenneth has been talking about, which is social emergencies. Yeah. And um, the first thing I wanted to ask you, I mean, well, maybe, Kenneth, you could tell us a little bit about why did you start the Design Center for Social Intervention, and what do you mean by social emergencies? So we're about the same age. We're also a decade old. And, um, and we started the studio because we felt like people who were doing the same kind of work we were doing in the social justice sector and the civil society sector um, needed a place to experiment and um, be more imaginative in how they conceive of um, social problems. So that's where the whole reframing and re- um, recontextualizing social problems come out of the whole design studio um, aspect of it and um, and having uh, and developing new techniques for actually intervening in problems that's where the whole social intervention aspect comes from um, in our title so um, we design we decided to start a design studio for social intervention because we felt like the social justice sector needed a design studio for social interventions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, and let's just, we're going to talk a little bit more about the center later, but just very briefly, what was your analysis of like why the social justice community needed this sort of place to play, place to play creatively? Um, we spent a lot of time organizing, we spent a lot of time planning, we spent a lot of time evaluating, but we don't spend enough time. Um, looking for things that don't exist and imagining and, and trying to continue to develop techniques and methodologies. Yeah. I mean, so what that means is we then over rely on the methodologies that exist and, um, and new methodologies don't um, get to um, then emerge and get play and, and then move into our, our tactics for how to create social change. And without mm -hmm. those, we find ourselves using a hammer for everything. <laughs> and so, um, and so we felt like we needed to at least start to say that we can invent um, other tools and techniques, and we can deploy them, and we can see what they do. Yeah, right on. So one of the things that you come, and we'll circle back to this whole idea of the general philosophy and theory behind um, the design studio later, but one of the things that came out of your brainstorming, your thinking, your sort of approaching problems creative, creatively is this idea of a rapid response to social emergency. So follow up on what Steve's second question is, and we're gonna give you a slide for this. What do you mean by social emergency? So it really, it really, the thinking really started with, um, um, what we saw after the um, sort of um, pro proliferation of state sanctioned violence, mm -hmm. 
especially um, in, in black communities and communities of color where lots and lots and lots of, you, know, you guys live in New York, you've seen it. I mean, we've seen it all across the nation, but where lots and lots and lots of uh, black people have been um, systematically killed by cops and, um, and, and people in general without much judicial um, capacity to, to prosecute correctly or to even even see reality. Yeah. And so um, and and so those things happened. But then as the as those things continue to happen, they continue to create rifts in our social fabric. Mm -hmm. um, and so and then those rifts continued across other platforms. We we saw more increasing um, sort of um, willingness to create school shootings or to um, make school shootings happen. We saw more um, willingness to say mean and hateful things. We, so what, and, but these things were happening as episodes, but then they feed back into the social fabric. And so yeah. as every, as every, as we sort of witness these things happening at a rap, at a more and more rapid pace, we also see social fabric ripping. And then, as well, some of us that have the training to see social fabric ripping, or the sort of consciousness around that, we see social fabric ripping, and and then we see that the population doesn't see that we need a, a commensurate response to the ripping of social fabric. And what that then means for um, how we do we trust each other? Do we feel comfortable on the trains? Do we feel comfortable on the um, buses together? Like, and so this meltdown and what we see sort of as a meltdown in social trust, as we see as a meltdown in sort of civil society, we're calling the social emergency, and we. Uh, and with the election of Trump, we saw a sort of um, uh, uh, expedited sort of um, concrete manifestation of the social emergency and um, sort of what you know we call a white identity crisis. Um, what what what's going on? The sort of how white people are conceiving of their own reality, um, and. Um, and that sort of extending into more school shootings, into what we just saw with Roseanne calling, yeah. um, all the stuff with ICE um, yeah. and with the deportation of kids, and and all of, all of the stuff that we see going on, uh, we're saying all of those are more. Uh, Expressions of this larger social emergency, which is really um, the tearing up um, and the, the um, breaking down of social fabric um, mm -hmm. and the and the creation of distrust and rage and fear and trauma in our encounters with each other, yeah. um, and 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 that it, it, we we created an environment where more and more um, public rage can be sort of um, easily manifested and easily, um, it, we're, we're in a, a sort of a time bomb uh, uh, of, of, um, of confusion and rage and trauma. Yeah. So, but Kenny, let this, you're talking, I mean, I, there's an ambition here of like taking all these big issues and it's like you're not talking about any one of the issues, particularly it's the social impact of all of them. Which yeah. is really ambitious, and I think is like commendable that you're you're not you're choosing not to say I'm working on this issue. I'm working on the impact of all of them together. Um, but there's something about it that would makes me like, oh wow, you know, that that the more targeted you can be, in a way, the more effective you can be. So how how are you thinking about that? Like how are you thinking about the the risk and the ambition of like taking on the intersection of all these instead of just one at a time? I think the one at a time, I think one at a time for the situation we find ourselves in is incommensurate. The, mm -hmm. one, the, the one at a time just keeps showing you a window into this larger problem 
Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And we don't have a way to actually name and understand the larger problem. And what we're trying to do, that's why we're a design studio, mm-hmm. is to say these Let's, so, and, and, and from a design thinking standpoint, the social emergency is a reframing of reality, a reframing of right. a problem. It's saying that pol- police violence or like we have these things on the, on the posters, sort of Afrophobia, climate crisis, or any other things you could come up with, the stuff around Islamophobia, they all are coming from the same source. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they all are creating the same terrain. Mm-hmm. Um, and that terrain is a social emergency, and we need to figure out a way to deal with the terrain if we're going to come back and deal with these um, expressions of it. Yeah. One of the things we always talk about is, and we borrow this from the civil rights movement, is you know, one of the things creative activism does very well is it makes the invisible visible. And we usually think about that, about social problems which happen outside the limelight. So you have to perform them in order for them to be seen, recognized, heard. And it seems like what you're doing is. Oh my God, we that. use that same language. We use that make the invisible visible too. Yeah, well, I love it. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of rhymes. It, it rhymes, but it was like you know it's a major thing the civil rights movement did. Like that was like one of their major sort of tactics. Um, but what you're doing, I think, is a shift on that, which is really interesting. Which is you're saying we actually know all of these little things. What we're missing, however, is the big picture. And so we yep. keep trying to step on one. It's like, you know, to mix metaphors now, it's like hitting the hedgehog in the, in the, um, in the, in the circus. Um, and another one keeps popping up. And what you want to do is you want people to say, hey, this is a system and the system is fucked. And, yes. and so how, but okay, so the question is, we know how to shine the spotlight on white supremacy in 1963, in Birmingham, Alabama, right? Right. But how do you shine the spotlight on a systemic, we are fucked, that's nationwide, perhaps worldwide, in such a way that people can understand it and not feel helpless? And I know that you've actually, just recently, and when we're talking like two days ago, just staged an action, right? So maybe you Mm -hmm. want to take us through some of that and how to, you know, go back to what Steve was saying, how to take this mega problem you have and bring it to a scale that people can go, oh, I know, I know what this is, and I know what to do about it. So w- talk to us about what you did on the 29th, literally two days ago. I, so it's amazing you're still standing. On the 29th, we invited people to um, participate in a social emergency awareness day. Um, and we um, printed the posters you see here saying we are in a social emergency um, with like, different images like you see here. One sort of playing on Starbucks um, situation because we did the action at the same time Starbucks um, stores were closing to do that um, racial justice um, sort of anti-bias training. Mm -hmm. Um, And we got out to say, good for Starbucks, but it's bigger than Starbucks. um, Starbucks is another expression of the largest social emergency. And so that last poster you you saw hanging up with the numbness and the trauma and despair, we had those posters hanging up. We had these posters hanging up. Um, that poster we had it hanging up. Um, move again. Move um move your slide one more to the um to the right. So you see this poster that says um, the Starbucks things hit me harder than I expected. Yeah, yeah, we had that that poster up in public, mm-hmm. and we invited people to come up and read it and to write um, like a like a collective Google Doc, so people could come up and write on different versions of the poster, highlight things, um, and engage and take posters like this. Um, social emergency was already here; it's just unevenly distributed and other posters mm-hmm. um, and buttons and things home and. A lot of people came by and they just looked or watched or they engaged us and talked. And it was just an opportunity to just say, this is bigger than Starbucks. We're in a social emergency. Um, And, you know, and we had um, this uh, um, thing we developed called a social emergency broadcast system playing at the same time with um, a speech from Dr. Um, Mindy Fully Love talking about what the social emergency is. 
Mm -hmm. It had another speech on it from Emory Wright at Project South talking about um, how the party system is collapsing and how that's part of the social emergency. We mm -hmm. had music. Um, we had um, a, a social practice artist, Judith Lehman, do an artistic piece around form and convention um, and, their, uh, and sort of their how, how we're in a formal problem, but her work doesn't, it's very oblique, so it didn't say it literally, it sort of performed it, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we have to play to our, that, that aspect of ourselves too, which we believe a lot at the studio is we need um, to expose or to sort of bring in conceptual art and, and artistic practice into everything we do. Um, and so yesterday, I mean, two days ago when we ran that action, it was really about creating awareness around the concept. Mm -hmm. And we also invite people to run these spaces called social emergency response centers, which give people a way to come in and deal with the sort of affects of the social emergency that they might not get a chance to recognize or name. Um, mm -hmm. What do you mean by um, that, Ken? So... When I said earlier, like people are feeling, you know, like you get on a bus or a train and, you know, Palestine, um, uh, um, several, um, who knows how many people were killed in Palestine in that, that recent thing, or you get on a, um, a bus and you just, you know, you learn that 5,000 people were, um, have died inside of um, Puerto Rico because of the, um, the neglect of the state from the um, hurricane. And you get on a bus or a train and you see people sort of living their lives with their Gucci bags and their, you the know. French what, shoes, okay. Oh, they're, they're off, you know, they're lovely French shoes and it freaks you out. And you're like, what the hell? Like you're like in between two worlds. And you don't have a way to name that or deal with it. We're, we're saying that those affects are... Yeah part of the social emergency, you need to have somewhere to actually place them or they come out sideways. Yeah. And then you need to have somewhere to plan, like how, who are we in a social emergency? How do we act differently? How do we think differently? And so these social emergency response centers are places where people get to do that, like address where they're at with this stuff affectively mm -hmm. and, and try to pivot to figure out how do we act inside of it. Um, and for a lot of people, just getting that frame of social emergency in that just helps them recognize the reality they're in because a lot of people are in like reality shock. Right. It's, um, not, it's, it's the moving from it. It's, it's not just me that's crazy. It's the system that's crazy. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And, and being able to identify that. But then the next stage that I know is really important to you is having people move from that feeling to some sort of action. Exactly. Right? And so what's right. that move look like for you? Once um, awareness has been raised, like what's the next objective in the campaign that you guys are putting together? Right. We're trying to get people to actually be willing to, to come up with ways that they can start to put the whole picture together mm -hmm. um, and to sort of demand infrastructure, um, like public infrastructure, to begin to start to imagine the world we want. Um, one of the one of the things that we're, we're, what we see is like even if you recognize that there's a social emergency, there aren't places where for you to systematically go to actually address it. All right. of the spaces people have to go sort of reinforce the social emergency. They reinforce the dissonance between reality and um, and everyday life. Mm -hmm. so what's an example of that? Say it better. Um, so you wake up on a Saturday and you just again you found out that. 5,000 people have died in Puerto Rico, chances are, unless there's a, a really discreet thing around that, mm -hmm. um, like a march or something around that, when you go out in public, everything looks fine. Right, and so yeah. you, you feel crazy, but reality is saying everything's fine. Yeah. We feel like there needs to be a space where people can go to that says reality is not fine. We're in a social emergency and we the act. And so um, by having these spaces where people can begin to come together and like contend with reality and actually start to then say, so how do we move based on 
this, you know, what reality is, we can actually start to plan and strategize better. We feel like right now, um, the infrastructure we have to do that is so weak that it 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 um it keeps people not even like it keeps people not even from being able to strategize at all. It 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 it, it takes all the hope out of of um, the equation, and, and people do find themselves just shopping or doing whatever they can do. So well, our, you're saying before like the shock, right? And then. So you have the shock of just what's going on and then to feel isolated in the shock, right? And so what you're doing is helping to take away some of the isolation and that's when the, people can the, come together, they the make hope. it work. Yeah. That's the hope. And it's, and right, I think our what we're trying to do is just amplify the process of taking away the shock and the isolation to a point that there are enough people um, planning and strategizing to actually start to have concrete changes locally around a social emergency and concrete changes at a larger scale nationally. And mm -hmm. I know you guys wanted wanted to talk about um, what are some of our, like what are, what are the things that we feel like are going wrong? Um, or what, like what are we struggling with? Um, and I would say, you know, um, this framework, like, you know, a lot of people like it, but a lot of people don't feel like they, a lot of people don't feel like it's their responsibility to help propagate it. Mm, um, I don't know. Like I don't know. So that's mm. I would say that's one thing that's that's going wrong. A lot of people recognize or resonate with the frame, but people don't necessarily feel like it's theirs to help share. Um, well, I, I so, would also. I mean, isn't that a problem of just individualistic? It, it's all about me, artists. I, know, I wouldn't even say it's just artists. I would say, like, we've been at this for about a, um, a year and um, a quarter, and we've touched a lot. We've done a lot of circs. Um, uh, we've done a lot of separate actions around this sort of concept of social emergency, but there's, there seems to be a gap between people liking it and people feeling like they want to help propagate it. Right. Um, I guess what I'm thinking of is that you know, one of the things on the one hand, what's great about sort of bringing creativity and artistic sensibilities into activism is really this notion of that we're all creators, we all have a voice, and we all need to be able to express that voice creatively. But that sometimes is in conflict with the idea of this is a really good idea. It's not my idea, but I'm going to get behind it anyway. Mm. You know that right, and and a lot of and so that's a question for me or a struggle for me is like, why? What is that? Why is that? Um, uh, that the, that piece we don't fully understand, and I feel like we also struggle with um, trying to create um, shareable actions that are the right size for people to feel like they can do them on their own. Like we were asking people to sort of step into this action with us on the 29th to help us propagate it too. And yet it still felt too big or it felt not doable. So it's like trying to find the, what's the right size of an action that's propagatable. Right. Um, and, and also what sort of, how to create a space in which people can express their individuality within a framework that has a more universal solidarity, you know? Right, which I think is another, and maybe, you know, a lot of friends tease me because I'm an Aries. Um, for me, you do, you, we do often. Like, I mean, before we went live, we were teasing you about that, but. Um, you know, for me, and a good idea is a good idea. I'm like, what's this individual stuff? Like, right. I just, it's about that. It, it's about the idea, but the idea is good, I wanna move it. Yeah, but that's not true for a lot of people, and uh, you know, it's there are other things that motivate how things get moved. Um, so that's I feel like that's our learning edge is how um, what what what's our role in sort of helping to make this thing more propagatable, or is uh, or have we done what we can do and we go and do another test? Mm -hmm. So that those are sort of questions now. Well, how about for the people out there in webinar land, what what would you like people to do? Like, how would you like people to hook in to this idea 
of the social emergency, both concretely, conceptually? Like, what are you looking, what would be your ideal scenario if everything went well and you could walk away at the end of the day being like, man, that went better than I thought it would, right? What, what would happen? So if when like that thing that's going on right now where Trump and Kim Kardashian just met about gun reform, yeah. if other people just tack, hashtag social emergency onto that or um, mm. another thing goes, you know, Canada, you know, that Trudeau guy creates a crazy pipeline regardless of all of his sort of um, pandering to indigenous rights and the climate, then he goes and does this crazy thing, social emergency. Right. Um, another school shooting happens, social emergency. Right. Um, so, so for more people to see the hashtag as a, a technique to right. sort of um, helping to raise awareness, if more people felt like, you know, they could want to make those sort of social emergency posters or help create social emergency slogans or take the take the concept and do their own thing with it. Um, if people felt like, um, if, if pe more people um, um, took on running and, and doing their own circs in their own communities, that would be enormous. Um, uh, so I would say, yeah, uh, like taking the concept, taking the hashtag, uh, sort of helping to propagate the idea because we're a small team of three. We can only move it so much. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of people like what they experience, but then that's it. They don't feel like it's theirs to move. Mm -hmm. So just literally, like, if we just got more people who liked it to literally then move it, that would be an enormous um, help. Yeah. No, it makes sense. And that's actually what memes can do really well, is they frame what was kind of like, I know this is happening and I know it's messed up, but I don't have a way to think about it, right? And then just a simple thing like a hashtag or a meme can actually frame it so it all makes sense. You know, that aha moment. Yeah, these aren't just disparate. This is about a society falling apart. Like you said, the fabric is ripping. Yeah. Is there, I'm really stuck with Kenneth. And that would be, to yeah. add just one more thing to you, Steve, yeah. like, more people taking the concept of social emergency and actually putting more thinking behind, you know, we, we've done our little bit of thinking. Then um, um, Mindy Fully Love um, did her description on our social emergency broadcast system. I could send it to you guys later. But yeah. if more people actually framed it, like, what is the social emergency to you guys? Like, what is it? So, like, more people actually sort of what what it, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. We lost you just so, for a second, Kenny. Yeah. Kenny, I got a question for you from the audience, from actually President Margaret McCarthy. I don't know if you know her. Uh, she is uh, uh, the president. But anyway. Uh, United States. Yeah. Uh-oh, we lost Kenneth. Did we lose oh, your sound? Uh-oh. Let me see if I can do something about this. You can hear us, right? Oh, it's a, no, it's back. It's back. Okay, uh, okay, okay it's back okay. now. All right, so President McCarthy oh, no, says, um, um, how, how do you think about building teams for those kinds of rapid response actions like you did on the Starbucks day? Do you already have a team in place um, so you can take advantage, or if not, how do you put together groups like that? How do you think about that? Um, for the for that rapid response um, action we did on the 29th, uh, we put the call out about five weeks ahead of time, like four or five weeks ahead of time, and then we put a call out every week. Um, and we have a, a set of, of players that typically help us do these things locally in Boston. Um, so, um, but what happened for this one was that it was the three of us that really pulled it off. And it was mm -hmm. perfect, actually. Like, there was a, that was enough of a team to make it happen. Um, but I, I feel like like getting a set of people that are um, having a set of people that are committed to helping you pull those kinds of things off is is really needed. And one of the things that we haven't been able to figure out is how to how to create small teams of sort of culture jammers, like folk that are that can get out and hang posters or, or 
continue to move memes or do those things, like that's been a harder thing to, to make happen too. Like, um, we have people that, yeah, I'll stop there. I don't know if um, if that's enough of an answer. If you want me to answer more of it, ask another aspect. No, of it. I think I mean, I, I'd like to know a little bit more about the design studio and um, like maybe some of the other work you've done with the design studio for social intervention. Um, what do you think have been some of the successes there that you could relay to other people that were thinking about doing similar things? So, um, sometimes uh, we'll, we'll get hired to literally work with a set of social justice folk to literally help them imagine and test new interventions. So, like, for the first three years, we worked with lots of youth organizers and youth activists around youth violence and literally helped them come up with new tactics or, or new um, um, actions to help re rethink what the problem with violence is and to come up with new ways to address it. Most of the techniques they were using were, you know, advocating for more jobs or, you know, advocating for um, more uh, um, sort of youth voice and political processes. And, and so a lot of our work was around sort of helping um, youth organizers and youth activists see where um, problems with youth violence also can exist inside of contemporary forms of culture and what can you do to sort of do culture jamming. So we did a project called The Grill where young people literally went out and attacked this aspect of youth violence where young people would see other young people and then assume animosity. Um, and we said you can't policy your way out of that problem. That's a, a problem in um, a set of belief systems that you have to have another way to change. Um, so that's that's a project we're really proud of. Another Janet, hold on. just to follow up on that, what is what's how do you actually do that? Like particularly from a design perspective, like what what are the techniques you use in order to get young people, for example, to rethink what is violence and how to stop it, and also to get the older folks, the policy people and the advocates, to rethink and reframe the question. Like, when you're in the room, what do you do? Do you have them run, do exercises? Do you do facilitated conversations? Like, how does that happen? Oh, we for us, it's like we use the we use the basic design research process, but we develop our own methodology for investigation. So. When we do the disco phase, we have our own methodologies for what we're trying to discover. Um, and we're looking for sort of the right, what we refer to as the sweet spot or the symbol that sort of represents where a problem, uh, um, uh, intractable social problem is, is enmeshed in an invisible um, sort of aspect of the social that we might be able to pull, um, sort of pull out that, um, that the way activists have been trained, they wouldn't even recognize. So, so this thing talking about making invisible visible, the grill, everybody knew about it, but nobody thought that that, that was a, a a point of pressure with which to press to try to figure out changing the problem. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and and then when we said to young people, what can you do about the grill? And they said, you can't do anything about the grill. There's nothing we can do. We say, well, that's what we have to try. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and and it was hard, like, you know, trying to get young people to, like, go and, and um, go in a new direction from the directions that they're used to going in. It was very, really, really difficult. But I feel like that's our role in, in being a creativity lab for the social justice sectors. We have to go after these terrains that don't make sense otherwise. Now, you said okay, the, the usual design process. And probably, I think, I think, I know what you're talking about. I think Steve might know what you're talking about, but other people might not know. Like you're talking about the sort of different stages within a design process. Can you run through those stages really quick? So we'll like so we use that normal sort of discovery, ideation, specification, and prototyping mm -hmm. sort of um, process with all of our things. But then the methodology that we developed is what are you trying to discover? We're not trying to discover something for a new product, we're trying to discover aspects of the social that haven't been explored in problem setting or problem solving. So, mm -hmm. um, and we have a, um, a methodology called the 5S methodology, 
where we then say let's let's figure out what we can discover anew about the system, the structure, the sensations, ah. um, the symbols, and the scale um, of, of a particular um, um, social dimension of a problem. Mm -hmm. And then once and what we try to find there is an uh, angle that is un, is is less explored um, with which to hook in a new frame like you're trying to do with social violence we found this particular cultural angle with which to hang um, hook our heads on and that's this two people who might not even know each other might know each other making eye contact and assuming animosity yeah and that being called a grill like that and that being a known cultural phenomenon like going into that and then in uh, ideation, we then say what to do with that. Okay. Um, and and so we start to play and imagine like what what are we going to do with the grill? Like what what kinds of and you start to play with that. Um, in specification, you come up with four or five things that you're going to start to flesh out. Mm -hmm. And then in prototype, and you get out and do it and learn about it. And so um, another project that we're really excited uh, we feel like we've done a good job around was trying to intervene in sort of our conceptions of the public and into sort of food justice and food deserts at the same time we did a project called public kitchen where we posed the question if kitchens were public like schools or libraries how would it change social life mm -hmm. um, and so different than a grill where we went in and sort of found a uh, um, uh, uh, a cultural hiccup in, in, a, in a system and try to then go after it with um, public kitchen we said let's imagine a new infrastructure and test um, what would it mean to then situate that infrastructure in society such that it, it created adjacent possibilities mm -hmm. so um, um, and we've done that a, a, um, a few times in the United States, and we've gotten a chance to do it a lot um, in Australia and New Zealand, too. And we're hoping mm -hmm. to propagate that project more. We just talked to um, a bunch of Roma civil society activists from um, the Czech Republic and um, Slovakia. We're hoping to, to have one happen over there soon. I don't know if they'll pull it off, if they, they will, but we'd love that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, um, one thing to strike me an, oh, another. That's okay. Go on. Oh, no, no, no. You go ahead. Well, I think I think oh, no, all I, I want to say all then... I want to do is draw attention to how much attention you're paying to prototyping, because I think a lot of people who do creative activism, arts activism, and so on and so forth, don't relish this idea of that you're putting something out not as a finished project, but as a prototype, which is going to necessarily need to be revised. Go through that design process again and the, the the process that you have and the methodology you have is set up in order to create an experiential and experimental sort of atmosphere of how to do this sort of work which is very different than the activist who says i'm going to work six months on a protest or the artist who says i'm going to work a year on a painting and then blah, blah, here it is right it's really this notion of process and it's it's inspiring yeah but sorry, I'm cut, I cut you off. What what other project? It, it, no, no, we should probably. It's six forty-five. We should probably let people jump in. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I have some um, questions. One is from a filmmaker named D. A. Bullock, and they said, um, "Is there Our next filmmaker?" Step? What? <laughs> um, they said, "Is there a next step to social emergency, like social reconstruction?" I ask because I find people are so traumatized and exhausted by crisis that they do recoil to escapism. Being mm -hmm. able to articulate a building step would be helpful for my engagement. Um, what do you think about that? I, we totally agree. Um, we we thought by now we would be in this next part. We want, but we we we've been we've been calling democracy 2.0. I mm mean, -hmm. um, and, and and we just need to decide, um, and that's the reconstruction part, like. Um, how do we get out of the emergency into the, the next piece? But yes, the answer is yes. And we and part of why we wanted to create these centers is that we would or create these spaces is that we feel like getting to the next step will happen by creating these spaces for people to come together and strategize. And then we would start to build in the techniques and the methodologies getting to the next phase. 
the reconstruction part in these spaces. But yes, and maybe it's a maybe that's you know maybe that's um, something we need to think about is like renaming the spaces so that they point to the reconstruction more than the problem. But I don't know. Yeah, I would say that um, doing this work helps too. You know, like the the feeling of um, uh, being traumatized and exhausted when you have a step that you can take and that they're not always offered this way, right? So that um, creating your own is a great way to avoid some of, or not avoid, but deal with some of the uh, exhaustion to feel like, all right, I'm, I am working on this and it's taking steps. So I don't think it inoculates, or inoculates you. Uh, personally, it doesn't me, and I still feel that sometimes, but knowing that in a few days I'm going to work on this project or later today I'm going to do this uh, definitely helps, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, other questions. It does take a moment or two for people to type them in, um, but please, in the audience, if you have a question for Kenny, this is why we do these live so that we can get your questions and uh, relay them on to uh, Kenny while we're waiting for those. Um, Kenny, or sorry, Kenneth. I'm trying to say Kenneth. <laughs> um, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. Um, Kenneth Bailey, you're going to be at the Personal Democracy Forum next week. Can you tell us more about that? Where is that? It's at, um, um, at NYU. Um, okay, and great. it's a, a civic, uh, civic, uh, what's the name? What's that? Civic Media Conference. Got it. Okay. And, um, is it, how do how would I get to be at this? Like, do I have to sign up? What do I do? If you go to if you Google personal, you still sign up. Um, but yeah, you have to. I think it's a conference people pay to go to. Uh, and go if you're really a civic media geek. It's like all the civic media types. Okay. All right. And of course, you're speaking on Twitter. Other otherwise otherwise you can um uh. Uh, am I speaking on Twitter? <laughs> I have a Twitter. Um, if you if you're interested in following me on Twitter, uh, it's that at ds4si. I don't know if I'm going to talk on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I do oh. I do make points on Twitter often. <laughs> Be a string them all together to talk. I'm going to post yeah, a, a link for the Personal Democracy Forum for folks so they can check it out and see if it's something they want to go to. Yeah. Um, and the site, so are there resources for the social emergency projects and stuff on your site? Yep, if they go to the site and they um, go into uh, sort of what we're working on or interventions, they should be able to find Social Emergency Response Center easily. Okay. Great. And it's got all the stuff there, all the, all the good stuff. Okay. Um, again, uh, we'll give people time to type in questions. Um, in the meantime, for our audience, you, you, talking to you, we have a quick poll for you to do. We haven't done one of these in a little bit. But we want to see um, how this is working and, and uh, have some ideas. So there's a poll that's coming up here. I'm going to launch it. There we go. So how is this working? This this webinar in particular, perfect, just about the amount of material and the time you can handle. Would you like something that might take longer and is more intense and more in-depth? Or is this a little too much, too detailed, too long? Are you finding that it's hard to commit to an hour? Um, this will be helpful for us. Um, go ahead and hit your, wh whichever one aligns the closest. If you want to email us with some other answers, that's great um, if it's, you want to put in something more detailed. But we'll just give you, um, we got about half the people who voted. I just want to give a chance for more of you to tell us what you think. And um, this will help us reformulate these programs. Okay, we're at about three quarters. And um, just give us a few more seconds. And again, if you have any questions for Kenny while you're, if you've already voted, you can type those into the chat and we'll relay them. Um, oh, President McCarthy says, I'm so grateful for these webinars. I hope it's okay that I'm saying this out loud. So I go back and watch. 
It is. Okay, I can go back and watch the ones I'm not able to join live. It's such an amazing resource you all offer. Thank you. That is nice to hear from the President of the United States. First United United States. States. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm going to close this poll. Um, and if you're curious, those are the results. So we are considering something more intense and more in-depth, and it's good to know there's a little bit of desire for that. Glad to hear. I guess the people who think it's too much, too detailed, or too long probably already left. So, <laughs> um, all right. That's how that we works. Have, uh, last last call for questions for Kenny. We had a couple. Um, I'm glad to see those. Uh, in the meantime, oh, we we uh, have as always. You can donate to the center. It helps us uh, do these. The um, webinar software costs us a little bit of money, and it offsets that. Um, you can go to c4aa.org/donate, and that is always helpful. And um, Kenny, before we go, is there anything you have else you have coming up that you want to mention, or um, uh, an idea that maybe we didn't get to that you want to touch on? Word of wisdom. No, not not yet. No, I mean, no, I think we're fine. No, no, we're not. Fine. You know, give us, give us some, drop some your wisdom. Like, if you, what is if you had to say, this is my advice. Coming from Kenneth. I mean, you've got this camera angle that makes you look a little like Moses. So you got to kind of work this Moses thing going on. Like, what, what's your commandment? What's my commandment? Um, don't don't sleep. This is not a time to um, retract in your um, turtle shells, folk. Um, we can't continue to act like it's like everything's normal. This is um, crazy shit we're in. And I don't care how you do it, if it's with, at the dinner table, if it's once a month, or how much you commit to. Um, spend some time thinking about the entire system and what can we do about it. Deal with feeling with it. So, um, <laughs> Again, I, I think the ambition and the how you've taken on all these things and said, you know, these as a whole art problem that we need to address is uh, really admirable. Um, we have one more question from D.A. Bullock, and they said, um, does, does the Design Center for Social Intervention do any kind of national convenient, convening or connection? And I would also ask, like, if people are in Boston, can they come by any time, or should they reach out to you beforehand? Yeah, they should definitely email beforehand. Send me an email at kdb at ds4si.org so we can be there if you come by. Um, and um, no, we've never done our own convening. We've always participated in other people's convenings, but maybe it's time. Yes. Find the money. Yes. Yeah. Hear yeah. that, people out there with money? <laughs> people out there with money, we want to do our own convening. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> you put that out there in the universe. Yeah. yeah great. So, Kenny, this has been a treat. It's always a treat. Um, yeah. You know, you are an inspiration. You have been since we As are you guys. Our first conversation 10 years ago. 10 years ago. I don't know what he's talking about. I'm only 18. Yeah. And what we talk about is we talk about politics. <laughs> and also, Kenny and I share a love for thrift shopping and French shoes in particular. <laughs> so, oh, we love French shoes. So that reference about French shoes was really directed at ourselves. <laughs> right, basically. The French are the better. <laughs> exactly. But you are an inspiration, and it's just it's a treat to watch your mind work um, because you're just you're approaching this in such a systematic and creative way. And that that just, you know, it's just it's 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 the way to go. You know? Thank you. It's rigorous, it's creative, it's playful, and it's deadly serious at the same time. And Thank so you. we're honored to have you on here. We're honored that you're on our board of advisors. Um, as always, we are having a meeting tonight, but you're in Boston. No, I'm not. I'm in Atlanta. I'm, uh, I'm doing, um, <laughs> I'm doing uh, uh, um, some consulting. Okay, well, that's uh, even, even worse. It is much worse. <laughs> right. Um, uh, good for you. I love you both. I love you too. I miss seeing you on the bus. I know, right? <laughs> We gotta make we um I'll, I'll I'll call you guys later. Okay. Okay. Sounds Bye. Great. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody for coming.
Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you next time. Bye-bye.